Hey guys, I'm Steph, and welcome to my beauty stash. Welcome back guys, thank you all so much for watching another one of my videos. You know the drill. Before we begin, make sure you click on that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you're notified every time I have a new video upload. Today we are going to be trying out the new setting powder from June & Co. And I got the brightening powder. I've had this here in my beauty room for, oh, I think the last two weeks now and I just haven't had a chance to sit down and play with it and film with it, but today is the day. I've been using the June & Co. makeup sponges for quite a a while now I would say mm, probably a good year and these are the microfiber velvet sponges this is a really unique sponge especially the texture of it um, it does feel like velvet um, more so than I think it does feel like microfiber but um, it really works in that it doesn't absorb a lot of the product and it also doesn't feel as damp as a regular beauty blender or makeup sponge does um, right now as soon as you dampen this sponge and wring it out um, you're gonna think that it's almost completely dry but trust me the moisture is still in there it's in the center and so when you go in and you start applying your foundation and blending out the concealer and all that good stuff um, you really can feel that it is slightly damp it's not gonna feel like your other makeup sponges it does get the job done and for a six dollar price tag I think that is a great buy so when I saw that June & Co was coming out with a line of setting powders I knew it was something that I wanted to try I love trying new brands indie brands um, and just new face products I'm always up for trying a new foundation and concealer and setting powder is no different. I did pick this up on the June & Co website and it does retail for $28. And you do get 0.7 ounces or 20 grams in this container. Let me read you some specifics on this new setting powder. The new Juno Blur Makeup Setting Powder is a revolutionary makeup setting powder formula created with ultra smooth, finely milled, shine combating micro pigments that help to blur out pores, imperfections, leaving a no filter needed, soft focus finish with added brightening effects. It is infused with revolutionary skin-loving nutrient avocado extract to help moisturize and maintain a supple and smooth complexion both underneath and on the surface. Talc and silica are listed as two of the main ingredients in this powder. So if you are sensitive to either one, just know that those are the top two ingredients listed for this setting powder. This is what the powder looks like. You do get a little mesh right here to protect the powder from spilling out. And this is what the lid looks like underneath. It's not really a powder that you can shake out onto the lid. You basically just want to get your makeup sponge and press it into the little netting that's on here and then apply to your face. So today I will be testing out this powder. I will see how it does at controlling the oils in my T-zone and how it goes on under my eyes. That is my problem area right in here. This is where I tend to get the most cakiness and the most settling into my fine lines so let's go ahead and get started with the application of the new June & Co makeup setting powder to apply my foundation today I'll be using the June & Co microfiber velvet sponge this retails for six dollars on the June & Co website Now I'll be going in with the brand new June & Co setting powder. I'm going to use the same June & Co microfiber velvet sponge. I'm just picking up a little bit on the tip of the sponge. There's no fragrance to this powder. 
really pressing that into my nose where I get the oiliest onto my forehead and a little bit around my smile line and my mouth. I'm not liking it. I'm not a fan of it right now. Um, if you look up closely, you can really see that my foundation is now very cakey when it wasn't before I applied the powder. So I'm not even liking the way it looks under my eyes. I think it really accentuated the fine lines that I have. And even on my forehead, um, it, there's a little bit of patchiness going on there. So right now, I am not going to recommend this powder, but I am going to give it another shot with a different foundation and a different concealer. So we'll see if it's able to redeem itself but right now it's a hot mess and i am going to go wash my face and start again okay let's try this again so for the first time i forgot to mention this but i did use the bobby brown vitamin enrich face base as my primer so i already have this on my face and now i am ready to apply my foundation this time around i will be going in with the tart shape tape foundation For concealer, I'll be going in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Okay, let's give this powder another shot. Okay, let's take a closer look at it. I still feel like it's accentuating the fine lines that I have under my eyes. I don't think it looks as smooth or as blurring as other powders that I have. Um, so that I don't like. It didn't cake up as bad. It's slightly caking up like right in here, but not the way it was when I first tried it. And on my forehead, it looks a lot better than it did with the LA Girl Foundation and with the CoverGirl Concealer. Around my mouth, it does look better than the first application, but it still looks a little makeup-y in through here. I feel like this powder is really heavy. It's not as lightweight. It's not as blurring as other powders that I have. So that I don't like. It's just, it's not for me. This did not work well for my normal to oily skin. I think that if you have texture to your skin, if you have more fine lines than what I do, if your pores are as large as mine are or even larger, I don't think this is going to be the powder for you. And this is just my first impressions. This is already trying it with two different foundations, two different concealers. Um, I don't know how it's going to wear throughout the day, but I will find out because I will be wearing it for the remainder of the day today. This is the way my base is going to stay. Um, but I am not the biggest fan of it right now. Um, you know, I would say the best place it looks is on my forehead. And it really just, it didn't, it didn't do what I thought it was going to. I don't really even feel like it brightens. On me, I feel like it actually darkens a little bit. So I'll do a final check-in with you guys um, later on this evening so you can see how my foundation wore throughout the day and I'm not going to do any touch-ups. So we'll see if this was able to keep me matte. All right guys, so it has now been a little over seven hours that I have had my foundation and concealer on and the new June & Co. Makeup Setting Powder. I am in the shade Brightening. And so far guys, this powder is definitely redeeming itself. When I initially applied it, especially with the LA Girl Foundation and the uh, CoverGirl Concealer, this powder was a hard pass but I gave it a second shot. I said, no, let me just try a, another foundation, another concealer, because I know how temperamental my skin can get. And I am happy to report that I really do like the way it is looking, especially in this area right here, 
where I have my major concerns, which are the fine lines, large pores. This is always the place that my makeup starts to cake up. I don't know why. It's just the way my skin is. But so far, guys, yeah, this powder is coming through. It is blurring, and I really love the way my under eye area is looking. I'm happy with it, but I'm going to give it another shot tomorrow. I'm going to try a whole new foundation, whole new concealer, and I will give you my final, final thoughts tomorrow once I try this out once again. So I will see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, so it has now been five days that I have been wearing the new setting powder from June & Co. This is the makeup setting powder in the shade Brighton, and I have a few things to say about this. Um, over the last five days, I've been just uh, okay um, with the way my skin has looked. In particular, my under eye area, that is my problem area with the fine lines. And I always tend to get cakiness right in here. Also, I am a normal to oily skin type, um, mainly oily in my T-zone, especially my nose. My nose gets the oiliest the fastest. So as far as it controlling my oils, it did just a so-so job. Um, I did need to touch up um, midday, but I mean, you know, with a lot of powders, I tend to have to do that. So um, that was no big deal for me as far as it controlling my oils. What I really don't like about this powder is it tends to cake up with different concealers or foundations. In particular, I have found that this powder cakes up with more hydrating concealers or foundations versus, you know, the matte um, concealers foundations that I tend to use. So that is something that I did notice in trying this over the last five days. So for example, yesterday I was wearing the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation along with the new Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Concealer, and I did notice my fine lines under my eyes were more exaggerated and I was experiencing some cakiness right in here especially around my mouth area almost um, immediately upon application so um, when I first applied this day one I was using Tarte Shape Tape I was also using the Tarte uh, Shape Tape foundation and it performed better with that combo now um, this is more matte versus this one that's more of a dewy um, hydrating concealer so this powder this new June & Co powder it does at least for me in my experience it is gonna work better with more mattifying products so if you're one that tends to shy away from matte uh, concealers or matte foundations, um, this might not be the powder for you. Another thing that I want to recommend if you are picking up this powder or if you already picked up this powder is to use a small setting brush with it. I found that that gave me a better application, especially under my eye area and pressing it into my forehead versus using a damp makeup sponge. I thought that by using the sponge, it kind of tended to cake up a little bit more. Another thing that I really didn't like about this powder is the price tag. This is a $28 powder, and I know this is a, a new up-and-coming brand, June & Co. They're an indie brand, and they're best known for their microfiber velvet uh, makeup sponge, but um, I thought that this was a hefty price tag for something that was just, you know, kind of mediocre. If you want some other suggestions as far as like brightening powders go or brands that make brightening powders, some some of the powders that I have really been loving lately are the Jeffree Star Translucent Setting Powder, but I believe he also has a more brightening one, although I think the translucent one does give a nice brightening effect. Um, you know that my Too Faced Peach Perfect, this is one of my holy grail powders. It really does the job of keeping me matte all day long and really blurring my pores and fine lines under my eyes. Um, I also enjoy using the It Bye Bye Pores um, Loose 
powder. This one does a really good job with brightening. Don't bake with it too long because you will get a, a very strong amount of brightness under your eyes. I speak from experience on this one. Um, a more affordable drugstore option, well technically not drugstore, but Sally's option, Sally's Beauty option is the collab, um, this, what is this one called? The collab set the stage um, translucent powder. Really do love this one and their foundation and concealer. This one is available at Sally's. And um, so those are some good options for you if you are looking for a new setting powder. I'm going to give this powder a 6.5, uh, bordering on a 7. Um, it was just okay for me. I don't really see myself reaching for it all too much. So thank you guys so much for watching another one of my videos. Stay tuned. I have more coming in the very near future. You guys have a great day or night wherever it is you all are at. Stay hydrated, drink your water, and I will see y'all very soon. Bye.